Hey everybody, welcome into the Delmarva Sports Insider, the only live and local show dedicated to giving you local sports all the time. I'm sports director Brandon Bosser. What is up? It's your Shirley Sports anchor Devin J. Martin. Welcome to the show. We've got a lot to get in tonight. Before we start, Brandon, it's great to have you back here in studio. I know we've missed you. Our sports department's missed you for the past couple weeks, but it's good to finally have the captain aboard the ship again. Devin, it's great to be back. There's no place I would rather be than right here on this desk. <laughs> yes, you, right you now. are right. I mean, we got you're right here at the right time. I mean, we've got Delaware playoffs for summer league basketball, Maryland summer league basketball, Shorebirds, uh, what else? Softball. I mean, just just hot off the presses. You just came back at just just such because a high school time. isn't in session mm -hmm. doesn't mean that the sports scene stops here on Del Marva. No, it never does. It never dies. Uh, let's start. Tonight's DSI off with a recap of this week's Summer League action. We're focusing on basketball to start uh, because we've got some playoff action this week. First round of the playoff taking place in Maryland, I and know. we got a show to put I on. I mean, it's, it's about time. I mean, a lot of these kids have been playing each other all summer league long. I know they're ready to see who can be the Summer League champs. So let's start with some action right now. Summer League playoff basketball action. Brandon's Junk Removal, not this Brandon, the name hey, of the team. Hey, let's go, Junk Removal. <laughs> They're taking on Delmar. This is from earlier in the week. The Wildcats showing great patience. They get the shot to fall down low. But then here comes Tyler Bolt. I mean, he was probably the Fantastic best player in the easy act. Yeah, and now he was on the fast break. He kisses it in off the glass for the deuce on the fast break. Brandon's Junk Removal, though, showing some good ball movement. Demo Biggins, that sounds like a big man's name right there. Demo <laughs> Biggins, he gets the finish down low the kids from Snow Hill they move on in the playoffs with no problem they knock out those Wildcats in a final score of 38 to 29. Yeah Tyler Ball is a lot of fun to watch on the court maybe the best player down here this side of Maryland here on the shore uh, with the Salisbury School and the thing about Ball is not only is he a tremendous shooter uh, he's great on the offensive end but he's just as tenacious on defense and uh, it leads to a lot of boards and steals for him. Uh, and it'll be fun to see yeah. which college gets him because he is going to be a, a senior to watch this year. And congratulations to Brandon's junk removal moving on to the semifinals yeah, next absolutely. week. Absolutely. Yeah, just wanted to piggyback off your Tyler Ball point. I mean, he was getting a lot of buckets last mm -hmm. year, too. He was putting up 25, 30 a night. I mean, just... When you have skill like that, you especially here in the base, got a that's great jumper take you somewhere. and yeah. a great offensive IQ as well. We've been seeing he him sure since does. he was a freshman, so he's he's been opening eyes for years now. Team Persevere versus changing the culture and the Bennett Clippers kids starting off strong. The steal, the fast break, the lay in, yeah. and he Too gets easy. it to fall. Too easy right there for those kids. Persevere gave culture a hard time in this matchup. The baseball pass up ahead, another two points for the score. Kids from Bennett, no trouble at all for them. Jace Hudson going to show off a little on this play right here. Behind the back. That was sweet. Zakai Smullen uh, gets it right there on the pass, and Hudson finishes with a nice lay-in. Beautiful play as the kids from the shipyard dispatches, changing the culture, a blowout double-digit win for them, and this wasn't surprising at no, all. No, absolutely not. I mean, we've sounded like, I've sounded like a broken record at this point in terms of Bennett's kids, Jace Hudson and Sakai Small. They got the big two. three over yeah, there. they do, and Darian Collins as well. Just, you know, three kids where they can really hoop, they can really ball, and just as sophomores, I would say there are at least two of them were in the top five of the whole base side, especially the base side south as sophomores. Jace Hudson has a chance to be the whole best, best player in the base side as a whole. And you saw what Antoine Wilson did la uh, last year with that title. Maybe he can do that for the Clippers as well and carry them to a Bayside championship and beyond. And he also has some teammates that can, you know, be on the same level as him around him. And when you got a, a good supporting cast and another star player that can match your output, yep. I mean, you're dangerous as a whole team. Yeah, this will be a dangerous team. They went pretty far two years ago. Didn't go as far last year in the playoffs. I know they're going to want to get farther uh, this year. Uh, obviously, they're also going to want that Bayside championship. Yep. A lot of teams are going to be gunning for that. Finally, they got they got a chance to finally steal one. It's like I mean, when why, Jordan why, when, left yep. the NBA. Yeah, there was a big, you a got big the gap. Nets and the Rockets yep. and everyone going for that championship this year. The Bay Side, it's wide open. Wide open. Uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, this sets up the semifinals coming up on Wednesday. We have the kids from Bennett, Team Persevere, and Brandon's junk removal moving on that you just saw. Yep, and then we've got the other two teams, Bull on the Beach from Decatur 
and Kings, Y High Kids. So that's going to be a lot of fun on Monday at Snow Hill to see who the top teams are. Obviously, we've been talking about, you know, Decatur and Snow Hill's kids all year long. But yep. maybe one of them can get upset in the semifinal. I mean, as you mentioned, it's wide open. Anything can happen. I'm not betting that's going to happen, but it is possible. It is possible. We'll see what happens Monday. Tune in for those highlights. Now, let's switch things up. Last week of regular season up in Delaware yeah, in basketball. It sure was. And as we were just talking about for the Maryland boys, Delaware boys also wide open. Wide open. Any team can really. It really is this year. I don't. I honestly don't know who I. Th I could see Sussex Central being a really top team this year. Mm -hmm. I, maybe Smyrna comes back from a three-win season. We have no, no idea. idea. No idea. So let's just start off with the matchup that we might see next week in the playoffs. Court two, another team we didn't talk about that much last year, Caesar Rodney. We went to a couple Lake Forest games, but those two teams were going at it. Now, CR was cooking at the top of the key. A lot of these kids were hitting some threes this summer in the Summer League of Delaware, but the Riders go on down low and muscles it through. Big man down low. He tells him to get his weight up and eat some Wheaties. He gets the free throw <laughs> the fall as well, but on the other end, the Spartans get the layup also on the drive on the baseline, so don't count them out. They finish with a nice strong move down low. Lake Forest keeping their foot on the gas, though. You see a beautiful turnaround jumper from the mid-range, so the game is close. Spartans and Riders, but CR would go on a run. They don't look back. The Riders take down the Spartans in a very close matchup, 44 to 37. Lake Forest is one of the teams that were pretty solid last year, too, but Caesar Rodney is the one that comes away with the winners. Yeah, nice win for the Riders over Lake. Why is it always Wheaties that we go to? Why I mean, is that the cereal I, of choice? I, every, I can't think. When, when I think about Wheaties, they're just... Uh, such a healthy brand of cereal compared to everything else. Every other cereal is filled <laughs> with so sugar. It's so bland. Yeah, it's, but it's the only athletic uh, cereal that is on the market that most people know about. So when they say, you know, get your weight up, eat your Wheaties, that's when, you know, just, I, I wouldn't say get your weight up, eat some cinnamon toast punch. No, it would be <laughs> eat your Wheaties. What about so, total? Uh, that's <laughs> okay. You know, that's you total. Want. That's a total, too. I don't hey. know if these kids know about total. Yeah, eat some oatmeal. All right. <laughs> How about uh, over to court one now for Polytech versus Seaford. The Panthers starting off fast break buck it to keep the lead here on the other end the Blue Jays pull up from three point land and you know what's going to happen here they mm. drain that one no problem at all but Polytech controlling the tempo from the opening jump Jays could only stand back and watch as the Panthers dominate as they uh, nice finish down low there Polly handles business against the Jays blowout 60 to 35. This was a rematch of the Henlo Open Conference Championship yeah, from this, this past is, winter. This is definitely not 2022 anymore, and you can definitely tell Polytech still good. Seaford, we'll yeah, see. We'll see. We'll you see. You can't make uh, a lot of conclusions from just summer league basketball, but we do know that. Seaford is going to have an uphill climb this year compared to yeah, last year. Yeah, they absolutely will. And Polytech has been a team also where, especially for me personally, I thought that they were going to suffer a big, you know, drop off because they were losing two of their three best players. But they still look like they have a lot of good pieces around Darrell Little. He's obviously going to have to carry more of an offensive load than yep. he did last season. But it also seems like he has some other teammates that can also do their own thing and be competent on the court with him. And all you need is a couple good guys that also know what they're doing. And then, you know, one star can take them over a top, especially on the high Absolutely. school level here. Now, moving on, we also got Smyrna taking on Sussex Central, one of the squads that, you know, we think that is definitely the best so far in the Summer League up in Delaware. Now, the Knights have looked really good this summer, but Smyrna's been looking decent too, especially better than last season. The Golden Knights ball movement was looking like the mid-2010 Spurs. Everyone touched the ball and it found the bottom of the net from beyond the arc, but the Eagles respond with a three of their own. Now, the difference between Smyrna and Central is the fact that the Golden Knights have something that Ooh, someone yeah. that can do that. That's McBride Allen right there. He's going to be a beast down low. I think he's the key of most of the entire handle open. I think if he does what he's supposed to do, Central mm -hmm. is going to be a top two or three squad in the entire handle Not many teams open. can match that size down low, that's Absolutely for sure. Absolutely not. And so this squad may be a matchup, championship matchup in terms of this year's summer league between Smyrna and Sussex Central. But things aren't as cut as dry as they were last season. We were just talking about it. Laurel and Seaford stood above the rest uh, this time in 2022. But now it's hard to tell my money's on Central being at this one side of the championship at the end of the summer league. Who the other team is, I don't know yet. I don't know either. Uh, Central looks pretty good so far. So uh, they, they definitely turned things around last year going from, I believe, a 2-17 and 17 team to a 500 team. team. Yep. Uh, that's impressive right there, yep. and so maybe that's the catalyst for them to 
maybe start to contend for a Henlopen North Championship. Who knows? That'll do it for the A Block. We're taking our first time out. When we return, we are taking a trip down to Princess Anne. We're talking about the UMES Hawks, about building on that success from last year coming up on DSI. I'm Bryson Coleman from Decatur, and this is Delmarva Sports Insider.